Hey everybody, it's me, John, I just wanted to show you all a little project I've been working on. Uh, and let's just take a look here. This is a remote control car base that, if you couldn't tell, is from a remote control car. Uh, I removed the top and also removed the main board out of it and replaced it with a bunch of things here, as you can see. Um, and I got the car from my cousin for like $20. I paid him $1 on the spot. I'm slowly working my way up there. I'm sorry I haven't paid you back yet, Gavin. I'm working on it. Um, but anyway, I ripped out the guts and salvaged what I could and decided to replace it with something a little bit different. Um, anybody who develops here and knows about microcomputers and stuff will know two devices on here immediately. Um, on the left, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's a microcomputer that runs a full desktop operating system, but I kind of slimmed it down a little bit. And then um, over here on this blue breadboard, that's an Arduino Micro. Uh, micro uh, controller rather instead of a microcomputer. Uh, really fantastic device as well, very extensible. Um, and now the Raspberry Pi itself is like the brain of everything. It connects to Wi Fi, which allows me to control the car through Wi Fi. Um, and as you can tell, there's also a camera on there so I can see what's going on. Uh, and then the Raspberry Pi also commands the Arduino to do things over there. And uh, so what basically what the Arduino is controlling right now is just the rear motor. Um, the rear motor is controlled by a bunch of relays because, um, as you can see, that is uh, an Arduino shield. It's the motor shield from Seed Studios. Um, and that motor shield uh, uses an, L2, uh, let's say, an L298N for its controller. The L298N has a severe voltage drop at high, uh, high, amp high amperage motors. So basically, the higher amps you have, the you know, stronger the motor you have, uh, the lower volts it gets, and it just kind of dissipates that into heat. That's cool. So I just decided to use a bunch of relays to control the rear motors. As you can see here, not my most elegant design. Those are two relays uh, that basically form an H bridge. And then there's another one down there that uh, turns the rear motors just on and off completely as a safeguard. Um, now, and you can see that blue blinking light there. That's actually I'm at a max Wi-Fi adapter there. It's a mini Wi-Fi adapter that I accidentally chipped, my bad, when it was actually in a laptop. Uh, now, the car itself is completely controlled by a computer. It even has a webcam so I can see what's going on from the computer. And uh, the Raspberry Pi, as you can see, has those uh, USB ports. So basically what that means is if somebody were to put uh, their cell phone on here and uh, you know tether it with their cell phone, you could drive this thing around pretty much anywhere their cell signal. And uh, there were two main challenges when overcoming, or you know, when doing this that I had to overcome. Uh, the first one was uh, being able to actually, like I said, get the rear motors to rotate uh, because, uh, or the rear motor, not motors, the rear motor to rotate because that thing really does just draw a lot of energy. So whenever you turn it on, it would cause such a huge voltage drop that the microcomputers would shut down and then it would just shut the motor off, so that was counterproductive. Uh, and I ended up actually having to have a, have a separate batter, battery supply for the uh, logical equipment and um, the main battery here also still supplies it. It's just that whenever it gets that drop, some double A's kick in to take over for a second. Uh, but anyway, um, first main draw, uh, problem, getting the rear motor to work, overcome. The next one was actually providing enough power to get this thing to keep going past 20 minutes of use. As you can see, that's a pretty big battery. It's like made for a motorcycle to start or something. It's a 12 volt, 7 amp hour battery. The original battery was like an 1800 milliamp 7.2 piece of crap that didn't even charge all the way, so that was uh, annoying. Um, so what I ended up doing was just getting this monster and putting it on there. Uh, and as you can see back here, we have the motor shield. And we also have another device there uh, with the big... Uh, silver heat sink. That's actually a voltage regulator, 5 volt voltage regulator, because the computers themselves take 5 volts when the device, uh, or when the uh, motor itself, you know, wants 12 to go fast. So, um, that thing gets pretty hot during normal operation like it is right now, just uh, converting the 5 volts down to, t or uh, the 12 volts down to 5. Uh, so that kind of, uh, it was something that I had to overcome there too with just a heat sink, so it's better now. Uh, but yeah, everything is controlled through Wi-Fi. Like, uh, for example, I'm going to go ahead and set up the software here on my computer so that you can see through my webcam. I'll just point the camera at the screen and set of screen capping so it's easier. <laughs> uh, and we'll go from there. So I'll be right back. 
And we're back. So uh, I went ahead and loaded up all the software on the Raspberry Pi there. There's the Raspberry Pi's console. Um, as you can see, I was testing to make sure everything was working before I made a fool out of myself on the camera. Uh, and um, there's the video coming from the video camera. And this is just a simple script that I downloaded and compiled uh, from someone's website that basically just streams a very low quality webcam stream to a web application. It's an, M uh, an MPEG one there. And if you see if I... I hit it, everything starts moving on the screen because it's moving right there with my beautiful bottle of Windex. That's every electrical engineer's uh, uh, tool that they need. And what I'm going to do now is go ahead and uh, fire up the rear wheels. Um, hopefully it doesn't lurch forward and shoot off my uh, kitchen table that I've ruined. Um, this isn't my kitchen table, this is actually up in my computer area. It's just that this is an old one that my aunt gave me to destroy. Um, so let's take a look. I'll go ahead and fire it up. Um, it's currently off. Whenever I turn it on, you'll see. All right, and then we'll put her in reverse. And then I'll go ahead and uh, it's going to stay in reverse, and I'll kick it into forward while it's running. And as you can see, that thing definitely knows how, how to scream there. Uh, and I went ahead and just shut her off because I'm done with it now. Um, it also has full forward and or left and right control, of course. But that's about all I have. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick demo of how fast it can actually go whenever it gets picked up like that. Um, uh, if you have any questions for me about how I did this, what the wiring is, I'm not good at wiring diagrams, but I'll do my best for you. Uh, feel free to holler at me, email me, uh, leave a comment here or something like that. Send me a message on YouTube. Um, and that'll work. At, uh, but other than that, um, uh, a few more technical details. That black box up there is the relays that control forward and backward. It's like a makeshift H bridge, if you know what that is. Uh, definitely not the best, um, but it, it prevents like straight throughs and shorting out. So it's definitely not the worst uh, as compared to some different solutions. Um, but yeah, that's it. Everybody enjoy. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and enjoy the ones that are going to come out about this because eventually it's going to be out on the road with a cell phone as its internet provider.